this my friends is one of the best combo for a budget friendly video editing and rendering PC build. It's for someone who doesn't want to spend thousands of dollars but needs a capable mini workstation. It features 8 cores and 16 threads Ryzen 7 processor and an RTX 2060. So if you need the best bang for the buck video editing rig, stick around as I will be building, testing and providing some alternative options you could go for. But if this is your first time on this channel, on Epic Game Tech I share my passion in gaming PC build videos, unboxing parts and helping you guys by posting simple how to guides. So if you find these topics interesting, consider subscribing. This time I present to you a micro ATX build that is oriented towards content creation rather than gaming. Don't get me wrong, it can run games perfectly fine. But as we need to handle CPU intensive workloads, some parts are chosen differently than for a purely gaming PC. Now let's start building and I will explain more why I picked these parts and what can you swap when making a gaming PC. Alright, let's start with a chassis and fans, since I like to prepare it before starting with all the other stuff. It's none other than Meshify C Mini from a fractal design. It's small, cute and has a good airflow. I will definitely dedicate a separate video for this case overview, for which I will share a link at the top right corner. I will use 5 addressable RGB fans from a first player. They sent these fans over to me to check them out and so they look quite different than most of the standard RGB fans from other brands. Well, you will have a possibility to check some B-roll after we build this, but in general I recommend using at least 2 or 3 case fans in any PC build I make. Chassis is prepared, so let's move on to a motherboard. I will be using B550M Bazooka from MSI. It's one of the best micro ATX motherboards for its price. I already made an overview video right here, so you can check it out if interested. But in short, it costs around 130 US dollars and handles overclocking on Ryzen CPUs really good. Also, it has a good upgrade path in case you decide to get a Ryzen 9 in the future. Finally, here comes 8 cores and 16 threads Ryzen 7 3700X. Currently, it's my CPU of choice for more of a budget video editing PC, as you can get it for around 300 US dollars. But in case you are building a gaming PC, you should definitely go for a Ryzen 5 3600 as it's 100 bucks cheaper and delivers pretty much the same performance in gaming. And so you would be able to invest 100 bucks more into a better GPU. Video editing requires more RAM than gaming, so I have Wiper Steel 32GB kit from a Patriot. Nothing fancy, but still they look quite nice. As for a gaming PC, 16 gigs is definitely enough and again, saved bucks could go towards a better video card. I will be using WD Blue SN550 1TB SSD. It's quite a decent speed and also affordable NVMe SSD. One of the alternatives you could look for is Crucial P2 and you could choose the one with a better price. This is not the only drive I'll be using in this build, but let's leave it for now. Thirty seven hundred X comes with a nice CPU cooler. It's a decent stock cooler solution, but sure, if you can dedicate around forty to fifty US dollars more, definitely go for an aftermarket one, especially when using your PC for CPU intensive tasks as it will have less noise, better temps and even higher CPU clock frequency. But for saving reasons I will stick with this one. It's about time to put everything together.
going forward. I will be using a 650 watt bronze certified power supply from Akula Master. You can possibly go for a gold certified or a modular power supply, but have in mind it will make this video editing PC build more expensive. How many watts do you need? Well, mostly it depends on your graphics card, so be sure to check specific model recommendation. But just to have a general understanding, for a similar gaming PC, 650 watt is really more than enough, as most of the GPU models in this price range recommends 550 to 600 watt power supply. For additional storage, I'll be using 2TB hard drive. It's a nice choice for archiving your projects or keeping less frequently used files. In order to have the best result when working on a video editing, I would suggest such a setup. One SSD for your operating system, second one as a cache drive and lastly a hard drive as an archive. But in our case we will skip a cache drive in this build. RTX 2060, this is a GPU I will be using today. It's quite enough for this video editing rig and still can handle pretty much all the games at 1080p or even 1440p. But in case you are building a gaming PC, I would take save money from CPU RAM and put towards a GPU. So you could end up with let's say RX 5700 XT, which is at least 25% faster than RTX 2060. And as always, all the parts will be listed in the description below. And here we are, let's play some B-roll. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this part and now let's have a look at benchmarks. I've tested this build in Blender, Wiray and few other CPU heavy benchmarks as well as some games like Apex Legends or Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I will run all of these benchmarks quite quickly, so feel free to pause if needed.
so this is definitely a good video editing PC for its price. And as you can see, it provides some nice numbers in 1440p gaming, not even mentioning 1080p performance. Ryzen 5 5600X CPU can also be an option, in case you can spot one in stock. Even with 6 cores, its performance and production workloads is really impressive, but is around 10-20% to lower than 3700X. But at the same time, 5600X has 10 to 20% performance increase in gaming. In case you have any questions or doubts regarding video editing or gaming PC builds, just leave a comment and I will get back to you guys. That's it for now, and you can find even more stunning PC builds by clicking here.